Okay, my question right before that went out was this. I was going to ask. This is a radius right here. But in a triangle, what would you call this radius? The hypotenuse. What's the formula to find a hypotenuse? If you have an X and a Y. Let me say it that way. Or do you remember the formula when you're looking at a right triangle, how to find the hypotenuse? It's a theorem. Pythagorean theorem. What's the Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It's the same concept here, except it's X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. Or if you wanted to solve for the square, the opposite is square root. The square root of X squared plus Y squared is R. That's the Pythagorean theorem right there. Make a note of that, that this is the Pythagorean theorem right here. That is the Pythagorean theorem. That's all that is. Okay, so with that, we're gonna get started. Your radius can never be zero. If it was, it wouldn't be a circle. It would just be a point at the origin. So that's why it says cannot equal zero. All right, so let's get started. It says the terminal side of an angle contains the point negative five, three. What does terminal mean? The end. Now, it doesn't need to tell us the initial because where is every initial side going to be? Positive x-axis. So here's the initial side. Here's the terminal side. It says find the exact values of sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, so what I have right now are a negative 5, which happens to be the x, and I have 3, which happens to be the y. Now, in pre-calculus, every shape that you're going to deal with is technically going to be a circle. Now, in the real world, is every shape a circle? No, and so you use trig very frequently once outside of this class, and it's going to be using a triangle, but it works the same way. That was not a very good uh, y-axis I drew there. It's going to work the same way uh, with a triangle, except you're going to call this a reference angle. You see how that has a theta with a line? Yes, no. Can you speak up a little bit for me? See this theta with a line? That's called a reference angle. I don't want you to forget that. That is the reference angle. Uh, is the reference angle. It's a very important concept for solving with triangles because what that does is the reference angle creates this reference triangle, and it's what makes equivalent this triangle to this circle. It makes them corresponding to one another is that reference angle. A reference angle is the angle from the terminal side to the nearest x-axis. So it's not to the initial standard position any longer. It's now from the terminal side to the nearest x-axis, wherever that is goes to the nearest one. And it's always positive too. If you remember that note, that the reference angle would always be considered positive. Okay, that's a side note. What am I supposed to do on this problem? I'm supposed to find sine, cosine, tangent. Well, I have one problem. I know right now that my x is negative five. That I know. This point right there is left five units. I know this y value is three units high. Right there on the y-axis. That would be three units high. This would be negative five units to the left. That I know. What do I not know right now? The radius. We don't know the radius. How could we find the radius? You can do it by hypotenuse, or you could use that formula I gave you earlier, which says that if the way you'll hear me say the formula this year is you'll hear me say x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Or if you're doing triangles, if we had to do triangles, I would actually say it x squared plus y squared equals h squared. Now we're going to be working with circles. So here's our formula. We need to find r. So let's plug in. What's our x? Negative 5. And in case you use a calculator, you need to put that in parentheses to square it. Otherwise, the calculator will give you the wrong value. What's the y? And that will equal r squared. Now, the formula on the previous page, what they did is they took a square root here. Now, why would they take a square root? The square, they get rid of that square. Now, usually when you add a square root that's not originally there, you need to do a plus or minus. But by rule, a radius has to be positive. Radius cannot be negative. It's a circle. Can't have a negative radius. So we're not going to do plus or minus. We're going to say it's a positive. So here's how they come up with their formula that r equals the square root of What's negative 5 times negative 5? 25. Very good. And 3 times 3? 9. 
25 plus 9 is uh, not 36, but 34. Now, the question is, can I reduce the square root? Because you will have to reduce it. This is part of the exact values. Is We're not going to type this in the calculator. Square roots, if they don't reduce perfectly, are never ending, never repeating decimals. Okay, They're irrational numbers. That means never ending and never repeating. So it's kind of like pi. Never ending, never repeating. It's not like one third. One third is not irrational because it repeats, even though it continues on, it repeats. 0.333. Okay, what we need to know is can I reduce this at all? Here's the way to check. Try to divide in prime numbers. So I start with the smallest prime number possible. Can I, and I'm doing upside down division, can two go into 34? Yes. yes. How many times? Now, what you need is a pair. To reduce the square root, you need a pair of prime numbers. Now, can two go into 17? Can three go into 17? Can anything go into 17 or 17 prime? Okay, that means that the square root of 34 is equal to the square root of 2 times the square root of 17. Nothing reduces there. You can't reduce it, so we'll leave it as that. R is the square root of 34. You will see some today that do reduce. This one does not. Now that we found that, now that I've introduced all these extra little topics, we can now just write our answers. So sine, it says first find sine. Well, the sine of theta... Sine is what letter again? Sine is y. It's going to be 3 divided by square root 34. Now, a rule. I think we talked about this last class. You, we will not. Did, I, did we talk about that you don't need the square root of the denominator? Yes. And so doing proper math, to get rid of a square root in the denominator, you multiply top and bottom by that square root. Now, this is technically multiplying by 1. Square root of 34 divided by square root of 34 is 1. So it's not like I'm changing the problem, but if I multiply straight across rather than canceling, I get 3 square roots of 34 over, I don't know what the number of 34 times 34 is, but it would be the square root of whatever that is. But when you take the square root of the square root of whatever 34 squared is, you'll end up with 34. Now that's going to be our answer for sine. Sine equals that. Now, sine is y. What's cosine? Okay, what's our x here? Negative 5. And it's also x over r, which happens to be square root of 34. I have to reduce the same way. You do not leave a square root in the denominator. So showing the math, you do it like this. The, the shortcut is you just shoot up the square root. You remember me saying that? negative five square roots of 34 over 34. What you do is you shoot up your square root and then you drop the square root symbol on the denominator. Okay, sine is y, cos is x, tangent is, what is tangent? y over x. Sine is y, cos is x, tangent is y over x. All you have to do is you take the numerators, the denominators will cancel. So it'll be three over negative five. Now I can leave that one alone. There's no square in the denominator. I can leave my answer like that. So there are my solutions here. All right, example two. So we're just going to kind of working through that today. It says, let theta be an acute angle such that sine theta is 5 over 6 and theta lies in quadrant 1. Evaluate the cosine and tangent values of theta. Find the exact values. Do not use decimals. Remember, exact values means we're going to be using square roots most likely, but not decimals. So here, let's start with this. Sine is what ratio? What is sine's ratio? Sine is what is sine? Y. Now, it's not just Y technically. It's Y divided by R. So I'm going to have a circle with a radius 6. If you wanted to draw this, you would add a circle with a radius of 6. I'm going to put the point here just to show you that this point here would be 6, 0. This point would be 0, 6. So if you want to just do your best little circle around there, we have a radius of 6. Now, what do we want our Y value to be? Five. I'm going to just take a guess and say that this is approximately five right there. Does that look like it might be about five? 
If that's six, does that look like an okay spot to put a five? That means wherever we are in the circle, we have a Y value of five. This has to be straight across from there. So I'm gonna try to draw my point straight across from that five. Now, where does every angle begin from? Say the positive X axis. There's your initial side. The terminal side goes to that point right there, like that. Now that's how I would draw this. You'd put a theta in this symbol or in this and the angle right there. Now that's what it should look like. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a line for my X so I can see it as a triangle. Whoops. To help us solve as we go here. All right, at this moment, do we know what the value of Y is? Five. Do we know what the value of X is? Uh, six goes to here. Do I know what the value of this X is right here in the triangle? No, I don't know X, but do I know what the hypotenuse the, or the radius is? Yes, I do. What's the radius? Six, that goes here. So what's the only part I'm missing? This X value for the triangle. By the way, this theta would be the same as the reference angle. They'd be one and the same. The theta on the circle is the same as the reference angle in this triangle. So I would use my theorem that x squared plus y squared equals your radius squared or your hypotenuse squared, whichever way you want to think of it. It's mathematically the same. A radius is the same as a hypotenuse. So we plug in our numbers. Do we know x? No. Do we know y? Do we know r? OK, so x squared plus what's 5 squared? 25, 25 equals what's 6 squared? 32. OK, let's do some algebra. How do I solve that? Subtract 25. Yeah. And so x squared is, what's 25, or excuse me, 36 minus 25? It's 11, good. And so how do I get rid of a square? What's the opposite? Okay, so here's what we're going to have to start thinking. Usually we would say plus or minus, unless we have a drawing. We can determine on this one whether the x is positive or negative by examining the picture. Is this a positive x or a negative x? Positive. So I'm going to put a plus here because sometimes it's going to be negative. Because of the location, because this is quadrant one, I'll just do it off to the side. Because it's quadrant one, because it's quadrant one, this is going to be a positive. So x is the positive square root of 11. Can, I, can we reduce square root 11? It's prime. So we're going to leave it like that. And it says find cosine and tangent. We already know sine. Sine was given to us. It was 5 over 6. Sine is y. Cos is x. What's our x? Square root 11. And technically, it's not just x by itself. It's x divided by the radius. What's our radius? 6. Sine is y. Cos is x. Tangent is 5 uh, x or y over x, which means 5 over square root 11. Now, can I leave my answer in that form? No. Why not? What's wrong? Square in the denominator. You don't leave a square in the denominator. Mathematically, how do I get rid of it? I, I multiply by a weird looking one. I multiply by the square root of 11 divided by the square root of 11. Do I cancel those square root of 11s? No. This becomes 5 times the square root of 11. This, I do know this number. 11 squared is 121. So it's the square root of 121. Go to your calculator. The square root of 121 is going to be 11. That's basically the square root of 11 squared. So there's our answer right there. I'm going to just box up those because that's all it asked me to find. But I wrote them all three together for the sake of notes. So this is how we do trig when you're, rate, when you're not on a unit circle. This is very simple. All you do is you divide by R or you solve for R. Etc.
<clears throat> All right, with that, I'm gonna give you your first DOL. Now, I want you to notice, it says it terminates in quadrant three. So are you trying to draw this in this, this little small space here for first quadrant? No, draw it over here. And your angle, whenever you go to put your angle, if you wanted to, you would start it still from here and draw it over. But after you find your points and you draw your line, then add that. But that's where the theta would come from. Theta will come from the first quadrant and then somewhere over here. So you'll have to think through what, why is it, if sine is y, cos is x, what is tangent? Why does a positive four and a positive seven go in into a negative x and a negative y? You'll have to think about how to do that, okay? But once you do that, find sine and cosine. DOL number one. All right, now this slide here, what, what shapes did I just put place here on your screen? Triangles. Are you going to be tested on triangles? No, what this is doing is just trying to tie in for something you learned in uh, geometry called special right triangles, the 30, 60, 90, 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, and the 45, 45, 90. You learned this relationship in geometry that for any 30, 60, 90, the ratios would be as follows. The shortest leg would be a ratio of one versus the longest leg of two, and the middle leg would be a square root of three, and so on over here, one, one, square root of two. Uh, sometimes in geometry, they don't use one, one, square root of two. Sometimes they do it like this, uh, x, 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 square root of two. So x times one is x. They'll sometimes multiply by x or so forth, just to show that they can be different lengths. But either way, this happens to deal with the unit circle values. These are the values that show up in the unit circle. We'll have values at 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 45 degrees, and 90. So that's all this is talking about. In this course, we're going to be using pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. Because if you remember, pi radians, how far on a circumference does pi radians get you? How far along the circle? It gets us... Halfway. Now, how many degrees is half halfway around a circle? Now, the reason we're using these is because if you do the math, pi is equivalent to 180 degrees. What's 180 divided by 6? Say 30. 30. What's 180 divided by 4? Say 45. 45. And what's 180 divided by 3? 60. That's going to be the corresponding values we'll use. So this is just showing you how this aligns to geometry. We're not changing geometry, but what we are doing is going from triangles to circles, okay? So to fill in this chart, we did this last class. We're gonna do it again, because you've gotta know these. Now, I want you to use brain real quick on a circle. Where do we put the angle starting from? Meaning, where is standard position? Positive x-axis. This is where we begin from. On a unit circle, this would be the value 1, 0. Okay, and we move this way. Now, tell me what happens as we move along. Uh, let me make sure it gives me a new line. I'm going to use blue. Uh, as I move my angle up, what happens to the sine value? Does my sine value get bigger or smaller? That's not working the way I wanted it to. Let me try something different. Let me go line. You're correct, by the way. Okay, this time... As my angle increases, what happens to the sine value? It gets bigger. What happens to the cosine value? It is smaller. Okay, that's the pattern as we move along. So if you think through it, remember how we said, if you start at zero, your sine is squared zero over four. This is not starting at zero. So this would be the square root of one over two. This was, did you remember what comes next in the pattern? Square root, two. square two over two and six degrees would be so what this eliminated was a zero degree and a 90 degree or a zero radians and a pi over two radians now that's the values for co a sine what would the values be for cosine would this be square root of one over two no. square root of three over two this is square root and this is square root, by the way, these should always add up to four if you look at the numbers in the numerator. 
And if you take away the square roots, one plus three is four, two plus two is four, three plus one is four. Okay, and then tangent, how will we find our tangent? It is sine is y, cos is x, tangent is y over x. Also later we'll learn it's sine divided by cosine. So it's square root one over square root three. Here it's square root two over square root two. And finally square root three over square root one. Okay, that's the unsimplified version all the way across. Let's simplify them. What is the square root of one? So it's just one over two. What about here? Square root two over two. Is it already simplified or can't it simplify? It's already simplified. You could do the equals. I'll just leave it here. What about this one? Already simplified. Okay, what about here? Simplified here? What about here? One over two. Okay, what about this one? Would I leave it this way? What over that you need a square root three and square root three. Okay, so what do we get here? What's the square root of one times the square root of three? Right. Square root three. What's square root three times square root three? three. Square root of nine, which becomes three. Good. Is this reduced or not reduced? Not reduced. Reduces become tangent always reduces, by the way. Okay, and what about here? Square root three divided by, what is the square root of one though? One, so what's the square root of three divided by one? Square root three. Square root of three, there it is. Okay, now you could have gotten those by using this, uh, these right here. The only thing to remember is that on a triangle, you need to make whatever angle you wanna use, let's say you're wanting to use 30 degrees, that needs to become the x-axis. If you are gonna use sine is y, cos is x, tangent is y, rex, you could have used this chart but if you were looking for a 30 degree angle, you would need to set this as the x-axis. The 30 and the 90 becomes the x-axis. On that little chart I just passed out to you, that's rule number one. Go to the rules down the bottom right on that little slide that I gave you. You see what's rule number one say? The angles are always on the x-axis. They the theta and the right angle. Here, if you were looking for 30, you'd say the 30 and the 90 are the x-axis. And you go from there. That's x. This is y. This is H or R if you're using a circle and so forth. So anyways, you can use that to help you out in the future. All right, let's go to example four. This is kind of neat. It says find the values for sine theta and cosine of pi over two minus theta for each of the given angles. So we're gonna use our chart here. So we're first gonna find what is sine of pi over three. Use your little chart, look back. For you, it ought to be easy because you're on the same piece of paper, right? Or did you flip? You're on the same. What is sine of pi over 3 equal to? Square root of 3 divided by 2. Let's see. Does mine agree? Sine of pi over 3 is pi over 3. Did we get square root of 3 over 2? Yes, we did. Okay, great. Now we're going to find the cosine of pi over 2 minus pi over three. Now that you might be looking at going, well, how do I do that? What in the world just happened? Let's try this again. How do I do that? Well, here, let's get a common denominator. That's how you did it when you were younger, if you were trying to subtract fractions. So what's a number that goes into both two and, or that both two and three go into? Six. Six. So one half is the same thing as three pi over Three times two. Again, I'm multiplying by one here. It's just a weird looking one. That's going to be over six minus. Now, what do I need to multiply here to get to six? Two. Two times pi over two times three. Again, I'm just multiplying by a weird looking one. That's all I'm doing. And we're going to reduce this one more time and then we'll get our answer. <laughs> So this is three pi over six, three pi over six minus two pi over six, which is equal to pi one pi over six. What is cosine of one pi over six? Use your little cheat sheet. 
Let's go back. What is – here's pi over 6. What is the cosine of that? Square root 3 over 2. All right, we did all that work. And what did you notice about your answer here? Did we get the same answer as sine? Crazy. Is the angle the same as sine? No, they're not the same angle, but we got the same ang uh, same answer. Huh. Strange. Okay, let's do part B. So we're going to start over again and do this. What about sine of pi over 2? Oh, this isn't on our chart. Well, let's think about it on the unit circle. Pi over 2 is equivalent to how many degrees? 90. So on a unit circle, remember we start here. Half of a pi is halfway around the circle. It would be right there. That's half of a pi. Whoops, that's ugly. Let's try this one more time. That is half of a pi right there. It is 90 degree angle, like you said. So if this is the value 1 comma 0, what's the point here? 0 comma 1. Now, what does that matter for sine? Sine is y. So what's the y value? 1. You got it. That's sine. Now we find cosine. Cosine will be a little bit easier this time. It's pi over 2 minus theta. What is our theta this time? Pi over 2. What's pi over 2 minus pi over 2? Zero. zero. So we're looking at the cosine of 0, not theta. That's not theta. That's a 0. Cosine of 0. What would be the cosine at 0 degrees right here? Well, sine is y. Cos is x. What's the answer? Now, this is weird. Tell me about my answers. They're the same. That's strange. I'm going to make a little note here. That sine of pi over 2 equaled cosine of 0, or actually, I'm going to write it this way, equaled cosine of pi over 2 minus pi over 2. And over here, I'm going to write down that sine of pi over 3 equaled cosine of pi over 2 minus pi over 3. I'm going to write that down there. So I'm just plugging in the thetas to this formula right there. All I did is I plugged in the thetas to this formula right there. And I noticed that they got the same answer. Okay, I think I have some more here to try, if I'm not mistaken. All right, I want you to do sine of 30 and cosine of 90 minus 30. Then I want you to do sine of 45 and cosine of 90 minus 45. You're welcome that I gave you degrees. It'll be a little bit easier math for you, I'm guessing. Okay, I want you to find these. DOL number two. Okay, at this stage, I'm going to pause and I'm going to show you something cool where these trig functions get their names. What I've been showing you here is the idea of what's called a co-function. Let me blow this up. I won't. I don't know why it's not blowing up on me for me. I've been showing you what's called a co-function. What does co-function mean? That means that sine of any angle is going to be equal to or not equal to a cosine of the same angle 90 minus that angle or pi over 2 minus that angle? Or are we getting the same answers or different answers every time? Same. same. It's called a co-function. Now, I don't know what's going on with my internet here. I'm going to try to refresh this one more time and see if this starts working. If not, I'm going to have to move on. Okay, so I'm going to show you where everything comes from. Uh, let's begin here. By definition, tangent. We talked about tangent earlier. Tangent means to touch. What I mean by earlier is starting in unit one. Tangent means it just barely touches a shape. Come on. What's going on here? Uh, secant means it cuts through. Does that make sense? What does tangent mean? To touch. What does secant mean? To cut through. Two points. And then sine means to connect. That's what those words mean. So I have them written over here. And, uh, 
Now, I have what was supposed to be a circle. It's just a stretch weird right now. It looks like an ellipse, but that's supposed to be a circle. Notice it goes as high as one unit. That's two right there. That's one unit. It goes as high as one unit. It goes left one unit. It goes right one unit. It goes down one unit. It's supposed to be a circle. Now, here's what a tangent is. A tangent is a line that just barely touches. You see how this line right here? You see how that line just barely touches the circle right there? This would be the tangent line that cuts through here. Mathematically, the value of tangent is the value that goes to the point that would, like where that tangent line is, it goes to this point and connects to the x-axis. This is the value of tangent. You following so far? Cotangent, which you're going to learn about later, cotangent is the value that goes from that point to the y-axis. You see the dotted line? That's the value of cotangent. Here, this is, uh, now let me go to secant. Secant means to cut through. You see how this line right here cuts through the circle? The secant line goes from the origin to the intersection of the tangent line with the x-axis. That's the link of secant. So what is cosecant? Cosecant is the line that goes here, but instead of connecting to the value of the tangent line on the x-axis, what do you think it connects with the tangent line? On the y-axis. So this is tangent, this is cotangent, this is secant, this is cosecant. You following? Sine means to connect. Sine connects the tangent line to the secant line at the point of tangency. You see how it connects those two? That's sine. Sine connects to which axis? The x. Okay, cosine. Where do you think cosine connects to? To the y. This is cosine. So tangent, sine, secant. Cotangent, cosine, cosecant. Does that make sense how they're the names where they come from? Now, watch as I move the angle. As I move the angle, the values are constantly changing. So now, what's happened to, let me go over here. Is my sine value a large number or small number? This is sine. Sine is y. Remember how sine is y? Is this sine large or small? Small. What about cosine? It's larger. When you take a small number and divide it by a large number, you get something really small. That's why tangent's so small there. But if I move my angle, let's go over here. Now tell me about my sine. Is my sine large or small compared to cosine? Large. Sine is large. Cosine small. When you divide those, you get a larger number. Tangent gets larger. Cotangent gets smaller. Sine is large. Cosine small. Secant's large. Cosecant is small. Are you seeing where these are coming from? These are where the names come from. I want to show you the naming convention. Okay, so why do I show you this now? If I went to, uh, this is going to be easier if I use pi's here. If I go to pi over three, whoops, pi divided by three. Let me take, delete all this. And I wanted to look at the sine value. Here's what the sine value is, 0.866. You got that? 0.866. Now that's pi over three. Now, the cosine, just as we move around the circle, that's the value connecting to the opposite axis. Well, if you go to the co-function value, that means we now switch these two in length. The co-function value would be at pi over 6. Now, I want you to notice, remember, what is sine right now? Okay, now I'm going to change this to pi over 6. What happens at pi over 6 is now I've switched these two lengths. Because this is stretched weird, it doesn't look like they've totally switched, but I switched the y and the x. So now, does my sine still say 0.866? No, but if I go down to cosine, look what cosine says. You see how it's now that 0.866? Because all I've done is I've switched those two around. So cofunction values, what I want you to notice, cofunction values based off of a 90 degree angle, they're always equal to one another. What am I saying? One more time. What are the cofunctions? Tangent and cotangent. Those are cofunctions. Tangent, cotangent. What's the difference in the name? Co. You put the word co in front. So they are called co-functions. Tangent and cotangent are equal to each other if you take the angle away from 90 or if you take the angle away from pi over 2, what we just did on the previous example. What's another co-function? I just said tangent, cotangent. Give me another one that's co-function. Sine and cosine. Those two, if you take the angle away from 90 degrees, would be equal to each other. What's the other value other than 90 if you're using a circle? You want to say 90 degrees. We now would say pi over 2. Taking away from pi over 2, they're equal to each other because they're cofunctions. There's one more cofunction. 
What's the other co-function? Secant and cosecant. And so those would always be equal to each other. So that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, that's what all of this was about, was introducing this idea of co-functions, specifically with sine and cosine. They are co-functions, which means if you take an angle away from 90, they would then be equal to each other because the x-axis and y-axis are 90 degrees apart. You caught that. Connect, one's connecting to an x, one's connecting to the y. The functions themselves connect to the x-axis. The co-functions are the point drawn to the y-axis. That's the difference. All right. With that, I want to put that aside. Let's finish up the last few examples here. We're going to kind of switch gears here. It says, given an angle measure of 4 pi over 3 in standard position. I'm going to pause. I want you to think about where this should be. More than 1 pi or less than 1 pi? Where is 1 pi? Come on now. I need everybody knowing this. This part, I know I'm introducing a lot of new stuff, but you need to get this one. This is from last class. Where would 1 pi be? 180. Put 1 pi right here. I want you to put that. You need to know that. So 4 pi over 3 is beyond 1 pi. It's in the third quadrant. And the circle has a radius of 5. Put a 5 there. 4 pi over 3 on my angle. And the center, it says find the coordinates of p, p x, y of the angle where the terminal ray intersects the circle. Meaning we want to know where is this point? That's what we're trying to find. Okay, do you remember my formula I gave you earlier? I told you that sine is what? Sine is what? It's y. And now is it just y by itself? Y over R. Okay, sine is y, cosine is? x over r. Okay, we're going to use this formula to solve. We want to know what x and y are. Let's plug in what we know. What do we know about si uh, the theta? 4 pi over 3. We don't know y, but we do know r. What is r? 5. Okay. Here, we want cosine of 4 pi over 3. We don't know x, but we do know r. What is r? Five. Okay, let's do some crazy algebra here. By crazy algebra, I mean, how would I get this y isolated? How could I get this y all by itself? That's all we have to do is multiply by five. And we'll be able to solve for y. Okay, what about here? How could I solve for my x? We multiply by five because the opposite of dividing by five is to... Multiply by five. This is how we're going to get our x and y. Now, four pi over three, I gave you a unit circle with this, but the values are the same as one pi over three. It's just that in this quadrant, x and y will both be negative. Notice this is going to be a negative x because it's left and a negative y because it's down. But you can go to the unit circle I've given you. So you can open up this unit circle. I'm going to wait for mine to open up. You go to your one I just handed out to you. Find 4 pi over 3. Are you looking at 4 pi over 3? Okay, at 4 pi over 3. Well, my stuff's frozen again. At 4 pi over 3, what are you getting for the sign? Negative square root 3 over 2. That's right. All we have to do is say 5 times negative square root 3 over 2. Here's mine. It's finally loading. Um, let me get over it. There we go. All right. Here's 4 pi over 3. That's the sign. Sign is y. You take negative square root 3 over 2, and we're going to multiply that times 5. That's how we'll get our value here. Let me do that so I can go back and forth. Okay, so y is going to equal 5 times negative square root 3 over 2. And then how will I get my x? It'll be 5 times negative 1 over 2. So what is my value going to be? My value would be, and we're not going to go to decimals here. Uh, can anything reduce when I multiply by 5 divided by 2? 
No, that's my X. Let's go to Y. Uh, that's my Y. I'm sorry. Let's go to X. What's five times negative one? Negative five. Divide that by two. We're just going to leave it as negative five over two. And then that would be my X. So my Y would be negative five square root three over two. That's my point right there. All right. How about this DOL? Well, now notice, are there any numbers on this slide? No, so Christopher, can you solve for anything if there's not a single number on the entire page? Now, I want you to write down the ratios. Your DOL here is to write down the ratios. What is the value of sine? And I'm letting you see this so you can mark it out and, and maybe it'll make more sense to your brain. So I want you to write down what is sine. It, your answer should be a fraction, a ratio. It says, what is cosine? Again, it should be a fraction, a ratio. What is tangent? Again, a ratio. And that ratio should only be letters. You shouldn't have anything but letters written on this page, okay? DOL number three. All right, example five. It says, if theta terminates in quadrant two and cosine is negative one third, Find the value of sine. All right, help me out. If this angle ends there, I'm going to draw this like a triangle. I'm going to make, which means I'm going to have a reference angle in here. So reference angle would be a theta with a little apostrophe. I would draw it like that. Okay, it tells us cosine is negative one over three. What ratio are they telling us? X over R. So we label the X is negative one. The R is how do I solve for this unknown piece? And what should I label this unknown piece as? Why? What's our formula? Perfect. That's going to be our formula here. It's the Pythagorean theorem. What is our X value? Negative one. We don't know why. We do know R. R is three. I'm putting this in parentheses in case you use a calculator, but you shouldn't on this one. But if you were, you need to use parentheses around a negative number being squared. All right. Uh, negative 1 times negative 1 is? So it's 1 plus y squared equals what's 3 times 3? 9. I subtract my 1. y squared equals 8. How do you get rid of the square symbol? Square root. Now, I'm going to put plus eight. Why plus eight? Because what quadrant are we in? Quadrant two. In quadrant two, is y going to be positive or negative? Think about the y-axis here. It'll be positive. So I put plus square root of eight. Now, this can actually reduce the square root of eight. Two can go into eight how many times? Four. And two can go into four how many times? Okay, so that means y is the same thing as the square root of two times the square root of two times the square root of two. Well, what is the square root of two times the square root of two? It's four, and four can reduce to become two. So it's actually two square roots of two. Anytime you have a pair, here's how you do this. Anytime you have a pair, that pair, this becomes a pair of square roots, because technically this was square root eight, square root two, square root two, square root two. A pair will become the number itself. So that pair becomes a two outside. The single, goes right back under the radical. That's how it works. So this pair of twos become outside. That's how it looks. So we want to find sine. What's sine ratio? So it'll be square root two over two divided by, what's our R? Three. And that's because it's Y over R like that. Okay, so here would be our answer. Sine theta is... Square root two over two divided by three. Okay, part B. It says if tangent is four over three and cosine is less than zero. Okay, help me out. Sine is y, cos is x, tangent is. Okay, this looks like y is positive four, x is three, but we have a problem. It says that cosine is less than zero. What is cosine? x how can x be positive three and also less than zero negative 
They're both negative. So I want you uh, quickly just to draw a point through here. You do it like that. Draw yourself a little triangle that helps you. This would be your reference angle. Our X is negative three. Our Y is negative four. How can I find my R? It is a perfect triangle, right? Triangle, so it'll be a three, four, five. If you don't know that, it's okay. Just plug in your numbers. It'll be negative three squared plus negative four squared equals R squared. Three squared is nine. Negative four squared is 16. So R equals the square root of 25, and R is always positive. What is the square root of 25? Five, and that's how you get your answers from there. And so picking up, if we had to find sine and cosine, you just go back to your ratios. So sine, we know, is the ratio of Y divided by R, which in this case, the Y is negative four. And we discover that the radius is five. So be negative four over five. And finally, cosine is the ratio x divided by r. Sine is y, cos is x. And so cosine here would be negative three divided by positive five. Now it doesn't tell us to find tangent. Oh, that's because tangent is given to us. But I wanted to remind you. Over time, the reason tangent's positive is because the two negatives cancel each other out. We knew this negative four and negative three. This had to be negative based off of this information that cosine was less than zero. As we confirmed here, cosine is less than zero. So notice that. Okay. So this brings us to DOL number four. I'll give you an opportunity now to try to find all the values between zero and two pi. So I want you to think in terms of a circle where r times cosine would equal zero. So just start this way. Whoops. And uh, you're thinking through on a unit circle, all the places where r times cosine would equal zero. And if you want to think of it this way, remember cosine is x divided by r. And this is zero. This would be one pi. Two pi would be all the way around like that. You're trying to find all the places on the unit circle where r times the cosine would equal zero. And uh, I'll let you think through how that could be possible. Okay. Help you out when I actually pull up a unit circle. Let's you look at that while you think on it. All right, now I want to pick back up. Example six here. It says a machine shop needs to drill through a steel plate at point P here. Calculate the actual measurement for the placement of the hole, then use your calculator to approximate the location of the hole to be drilled. Okay, so if we're gonna use the X and Y here, I want you to think through that the X and Y value that X comes from uh, cosine. So if cosine is X, then what we can gather from that is that X itself would equal, if you just multiply by R, R times the cosine. Or just the same, that if sine was Y over R, what we can derive from that is that y itself would equal, if you multiplied both sides by r, r times the sine. And so what I can do is just plug in my values. This is my r here. My r is 14, and here is my theta of 25 degrees. So I could say that this is uh, 14 times the cosine. Let me put an equal sign here because this is equal. I'm replacing now. This would be 14 times the cosine of 25 degrees. And here, this will be 14 times the sine of 25 degrees. Now, this says to use your calculator to approximate. And I want to point out, this is given in degrees, which we're going to be using radians. But degrees will work if you were looking at a triangle. That's when you would use degrees. Uh, degrees go with triangles. 
So let me draw a reference triangle here. That's when you would use 25 degrees. And this would be a right triangle. So I'll put in the 90 degree symbol. Uh, if you're using a circle, technically you'd use radians. <clears throat> okay, so that looks like an if. Let me rewrite that as 14. So if we go to our calculators, we can approximate this. Now the key is when you're at home and you do this, to make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So on mine, you can go up to the top and just hit the, from radian to degree like that to change. If you're on Desmos, uh, you'll have to go to the little wrench that's in the, in the top right hand corner and choose degrees. Or if you're on your cell phone, just make sure you find their mode to change between degree and radians. Or on my calculator, what I'd like to do is I just type in the degree symbol because that will always guarantee the right answer. So I'm gonna do 14, press the trig, cosine, I'm going to do 25, and the degree symbol's there with pi. And so I'll just do that, and then it doesn't matter what mode you're in. I'll give you the correct answer. Uh, one more time, 14 sine of 25 degrees. As long as you type in the degree symbol, the calculator will change the mode automatically when you press enter, and that's how you'll get those values. It says use your calculator to approximate. It doesn't say what to approximate to, so I'll just go to the nearest thousandth. So 12.668 is what I'm going to say. 12.668 is my X. 12.668. And my, oh, 688, I'm sorry. 688. 688. And my Y value is approximately 5.91, and that will become a seven. So let me just add this in right here, these calculations. So I don't have to keep going back and forth. That would be easier. Okay. So this is approximately 5.917. And so uh, that would be a point. And so I'll put them in parentheses like this, 12.688 comma 5.917. And that would be my answer there. Now that brings us to DOL number five. I'll give you a moment to work on this. And remember that every angle starts at the same initial angle. So both A and B. So if this is angle A, we'll start at the positive x-axis. That's what we call standard position. They both start there, but that's A. And then B would be this angle here. Okay, I'll let you think through. Uh, it tells you the radius is 10. What is the distance between the two points of the intersection? The circle and the terminal ray point A. So you're saying what's the, and this point here, you're trying to find what's the distance between these two points. I'll let you think on how you could possibly find that out. 